and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about Page's disease now. Page's disease is basically a systemic disease. However, it has some oral clinical features which are important and that we commonly do encounter in our clinical practice. So in this video, we'll talk about everything that is related to Page's disease. So let's get started. Page's disease is also called as osteitis deformans. Now, basically targets the axial skeleton more, which is the center skeleton of your body more. It targets that bones mainly now. It can be either partial or complete. Like for example, the bones can either be partially damaged or completely damaged now. It can also affect single bones, for example, affecting the mandible only, or it can involve multiple bones, for example, involving femur, humerus, ribs, and along with that, the bones of the jaws as well. So it can either involve single bone or multiple bones. Now, in Page's disease, basically we encounter two types of activities. Either we have osteogenic activity and resorptive activities. These are the two activities which are being occurred as a pathology of this disease. Now, there is also thickening and deformities which occur in Page's disease and which eventually leads to complications which we'll discuss further in the video. Now. I have talked before, the preference of Page's disease is for the axial skeleton. If we talk about the frequency with which or the commonly the bones which are involved first is pelvis, then tibia, femur, skull, spine, and then lastly, clavicle. So these are the preferences of this disease as to which um, region of the body is affected first and then in the decreasing order and lastly, which is clavicle. Now, as you can see, as you can see in this picture, Jaws are one of the region which are affected commonly by Page's disease. Along with that, as you can also see in this diagrammatic picture, this is a normal bone and the, as you can see the bowing which is present over here. So this is how Page's disease has affected the bones in this region of the leg. So we'll discuss this in more detail along the video. Now, let's talk about etiology of Page's disease. Mainly the etiology is unknown. However, some evidence suggests that there is some abnormality or hereditary issue in chromosome number 18q. So this is one mutation which has been known according to some researches that this gene is commonly affected in patients who are presenting with Page's disease. Along with that, some evidence also suggests that there can be some endocrine and metabolic disturbances as well. And very rarely and some evidence, little evidence has suggested that paramyxovirus family viral infection are also responsible for Page's disease. So this is some brief and mainly unknown history or you can say unknown etiology that is responsible for Page's disease. Now, let's talk about, uh, now, let's talk about pathophysiology of Page's disease. It is divided into three phases. There is lytic phase, sclerotic phase and then mixed lytic and blastic phase. Now, firstly talking about lytic phase, Basically, this is the initial phase which starts as soon as the disease starts active, acting upon the body. There is bone resorption and there is increased bone turnover. Now, if we talk about mixed lytic and blastic phase, in this case, there is increased bone formation, osteoblasts are normal, there is newly formed bone. However, the collagen which is present in the bone, it is arranged in a haphazard manner. And as in lytic phase, the bone turnover is greater. Now, Lastly, if we talk about sclerotic phase and this is the phase occurs at the end, there is increased bone formation and the bone formation is woven pattern. There is hypervascular bone and eventually the osteoblastic activity then starts to decrease leading to sclerosis and very little bone resorption is also occurring. So these are the three phases that are occurring in a patient who is suffering from Page's disease starting off from a lytic phase then mixed lytic and blastic phase and then lastly sclerotic phase and from sclerotic phase the complications in the patient starts to occur. So this is all about pathophysiology. Now, one of the ways to confirm that the patient is actually suffering from Page's disease is via histology. Now this histological picture you can see is of a bone and one of the most common features that we encounter and which is characteristic of Page's disease histology is mosaic appearance. As you can see, these are osteoclasts which are present over here where bone resorption is occurring. This is the bone. And if you can appreciate these thick lines which are present over here, 
these are the cement lines which are basically telling us where the bone has resorbed and now is forming. These cement lines then give us an appearance which is called as mosaic appearance or mosaic pattern. This is the characteristic appearance which you normally see in a patient's histology who is suffering from Page's disease. Also, you can appreciate these osteocytes are present over here. So, this is the important histological features which you should keep in mind if you are suspecting Page's disease. Going on towards complications which patient can face if the Page's disease is not treated at time. Firstly, as I have already talked before, this increased sclerosis leads to increase in the bone formation and then leads to dense bone and brittle bone. So that can lead to fractures and deformities of the bone. Other than that, there can be secondary osteoarthritis as well. Now, since increased bone has been formed, this can compress the nerves, thereby giving rise to neurological co uh, complications such as nerve compression and quadra equina syndrome as well. If skull is involved, the main thing you should keep in mind is that there is increased bone formation and that increased bone formation is leading to all of these complications. So, If we talk about skull, there is deafness, vertigo, dental malocclusion which is important being a dentist tinnitus and basilar invagination. Now, lastly, since we have talked before that there is increased bone vascularity, this can lead to high output cardiac failure. Although this is rare, but this is one of the fatal complications. So this is all about the complications with which a patient can present if the Page's disease is not treated. Now, when surgical treatment is performed on the patient, there can be some surgical complications which can occur and which should be kept in mind. Since there is increased vascularity of the bone, there can be profused bleeding which is difficult to control. Other than that, since there is dense and brittle bone, the bones are relatively weak and there are high chances that they can fracture even during when they are trying to be repaired. Other than that, there can be difficulty in spinal or epidural anesthesia as well. This is the surgical complications which can occur while we are trying to manage a patient or treating a patient surgically who is suffering from Page's disease. Now, when we are suspecting that the patient might be suffering from Page's disease, what are the different investigations that we can go for to confirm our diagnosis? Firstly, we um, opted for histology which gave us an almost definitive idea that the yes, patient is actually suffering from Page's disease. Other than that, there are some investigations that we can perform in order to confirm our diagnosis. We can go for serum alkaline phosphatase levels, serum acid phosphatase levels, urinary markers such as hydroxychlorine and telopeptide. Also, if we check for serum calcium and phosphate levels, they will come normal. But other than these three, they will appear abnormal. They will not be within the range of normal limits. So, these are the investigations which we will perform along with the histological diagnosis in order to reach a definitive diagnosis whether the patient is suffering from Page's disease or not. Other than lab diagnosis and histology, we can also go for radiology which also helps us a lot to reach a diagnosis that the patient is actually suffering from Page's disease or not. Talk about x-rays. As you can see, this is an x-ray of tibia and mainly Page's disease affects the long bones and you can see there is bowing of the bone. They have bend as compared to the normal way that the bone is. There is bending of the bone which is called as bowing. Also you can appreciate that the cortex is relatively thick as normally which is thin and the, the marrow part is uh, thicker. You can see the cortex is relatively thicker as compared to the normal bone. Other than that, you can also appreciate that the medullary cavity has narrowed down because of increased bone formation, increased density of this cortex, the medullary cavity has narrowed and also you can appreciate that the density of bone has increased because you can see there is increased radio opacity. Sometimes you can also appreciate as you can see this bubble like appearance. So honeycomb or spongy appearance is also something that you can appreciate and sometimes loses zone can also be appreciated. So when you're looking at x-ray, especially of a long bone, you should keep these radiological features in mind. Second radiological features that we can appreciate in a patient who is possibly suffering from Page's disease is called as Brim sign. Now, if we take an x-ray of the pelvis, you can appreciate that there is increased thickening of the iliopectinal line. As you can see, it's thicker as compared to this region. This is thin and this is thicker. So this is called as brim sign which you can appreciate in a pelvic x-ray of a patient who you are suspecting might be suffering from Page's disease. Now, 
moving on towards skull and towards from dentistry point of view important feature is that one of the most important features that we will encounter here is called as cotton bowl appearance which is also called as osteitis circumstricta now as you can see in this picture there is cotton like appearance which you can appreciate over here this is one of the signs which we can look for in a patient who is suspectedly suffering from pages disease if we talk from dentistry point of view you can also appreciate that these are the uh, teeth which are present this is a periopical x-ray you can appreciate this cloud like appearance or you can see cotton wool appearance so this is a very 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 characteristic appearance of a patient who is suffering from pages disease and we frequently encounter this radiological appearance which is called as cotton wool appearance in periopical x-rays of a patient who is suffering from pages disease other than that in the skull we can also appreciate tam o shanter sign which is where is widened diploic space as you can see over here the space between these two is the diploa and it's thickened also you can see that this cranium is enlarged as compared to a normal skull so these are the features which from a dentist's point of view are interesting to us to look for in a patient who's probably suffering from pages disease last radiograph which is important is as i've talked before the axial skeleton is mainly targeted by pages disease and spine is one of the parts so if we take an x ray of the spine we can appreciate this box like appearance of the vertebra normally vertebra is not a box like appearance but in this case you can see it is a box like appearance and this is called as picture frame appearance which is one of the characteristic sign of a patient who is suffering from pages disease also sometimes you can encounter ivory vertebra as well so these are the radiological features which we should keep in mind if we are suspecting a patient that might be suffering from pages disease to talk about pages disease in terms of dentistry there are some oral features which we will commonly encounter in a patient who is suffering from pages disease now we can also encounter that the patient has enlarged mandible other than that as you can see the roots of these teeth and there is increased density over here as you can see this is called as hypercementosis you can also appreciate over here this is hypercementosis increased cementum deposition at the apex of the teeth which is one of the common and important features of a patient who suffers from pages disease other than that we can also appreciate high arch palate in these patient there is increased chance of cleft lip and palate other than that there are multiple retained deciduous teeth now that is because since there is excessive hypercementosis and there is discrepancy between the sizes of the jaw they are multiple impacted teeth so since these teeth are impacted they can lead to retention of the deciduous teeth other than that sometimes teeth appear shorter in roots length and pulp calcification are also present so these are the dental features which as a dentist we should keep in mind when we have suspected that the patient is actually suffering from pages disease as you can see all of these features being appreciated in this opg before we talk about how do we actually treat such a patient who is suffering from pages disease differential diagnosis is an important component now we can suspect osteomalacia multiple myeloma osteoporosis and fibrous dysplasia now we reach our definite diagnosis on the basis of histology lab test and radiology so this is how we'll categorize whether the patient is actually suffering from pages disease or not since we have understood that the pages disease is actually a systemic disease which can affect a patient to a very large degree along with its oral uh, pathologies as well so we have to make sure to uh, offer the right treatment options to the patient firstly if the disease is inactive like it's not causing the patient any harm it is inactive it's not progressing further there is no treatment required however if the disease is actually active then we have some treatment goals that we keep in mind while we are trying to treat the patient firstly we have to suppress the disease because if the disease is not suppressed it will continue to harm the patient further and further leading to further complication and deformities for the patient other than that since there are some neurological complication which can lead to severe pain for the patient we have to make sure that the patient is pain free also since there are fractures and deformities associated with this disease so we have to make sure that there are no fractures and deformities so it can challenge the patient mentally a lot and one of the rare and fatal complication of pages disease is high cardiac output failure and we have to make sure to address this as well so the first group of drugs that we go for is suppressive drugs which basically help to arrest or you can say inactivate the disease 
वी गो फॉर एलेंडो रेड रेजेंडो रेड टेलेंडो रेड तो दीज आर द ड्रग्स एज बिस फॉसोनेट सेकेंड जनरेशन ड्रग्स विच वी कैन ऑफर टू द पेशेंट अदर देन दैट वी कैन ऑल्सो गो फॉर टैमिडोनेट विच इज गिवेन आई वी नाउ समाइम्स इफ द बोन पेन इज वेरी सिवियर एंड द पेशेंट इज एट हाई रिस्क ऑफ फ्रैक्चर वी कैन गो फॉर जॉलीड्रॉनिक एसिड विच एक्चुअली हेल्प द पेशेंट अ लॉट स्पेशली इन केसेज ऑफ सिवियर बोन पेन एंड देर इज इंक्रीज रिस्क ऑफ फ्रैक्चर नाउ अदर देन दैट we can also go for vitamin d and calcium supplements because it basically helps to strengthen the bone and give a little more push in order to help the patient more also the alp levels alkaline phosphatase level they also start to normalize in 6 months in some patients we can also go for calcitonin it basically temporarily arrests the disease helps bone pain for the patient and also improves the cardiac output failure of the patient so this is also a good drug which can be offered to the patient now in cases where drugs are not effective and patient is still at increased risk of deformities and fractures then we eventually go for surgery now if we talk about from dentist point of view all of these drugs which were discussed above they actually help to treat the oral symptoms as well because if the disease is properly managed and arrested the chances of oral features decreases however if we have impacted teeth we have to extract the impacted teeth and other than that we also have to make sure to ma- maintain a good oral health for the patient because if the oral health is not maintained the pages disease further worsens the already worsened oral health of the patient so in this video we talked about everything that is related to pages disease from systemic conditions up to defining the oral presentation so we talked about how to actually diagnose this condition the complications which are associated with it histology radiology oral features and then finally we talked about how do we actually try to manage the patient who is suffering from pages disease so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time